and we're taken back outside. Up above the entrance to the Arbiter's Grounds. It was way down there. I never bothered to see if it was actually the same. Or if you could see any part of the entrance from up here. I suppose you can't. I can't blame them for not putting in that sort of detail, but... Yes, we've made it all the way up to the top of the Orbiter's Grounds. Just should bring us around to the Mirror of Twilight that Mindus has been telling us so much about. We see another one of those statues. The Mirror Chamber. But before we head in, let's turn into a wolf just because we know what's coming. I said the one on Gerudo Mesa wasn't the only warp we'd be creating in this area. This is the other one. And this is where they finally start throwing more shadow beasts at us. So let's get a good bearing on our surroundings here. Let's try to take out all the ones that are out of the way. I suppose I'll take you out too, because you're here. You two are pretty close together. I'll try to get the other one. And let's see if I can lure you into you. Come over here, buddies. And keys are here, too. This is the first time we've actually had to deal with other enemies in here besides the Shadow Beasts. Not that it's a problem. The only problem with this warp point is that you can't get anywhere besides the boss chamber in the Arbiter's Grounds, and there's nowhere you can go from there, because the only way in or out is the way we came through to get up to the Mirror Chamber. So the only reason you'd ever use this warp point is to get back up here for story reasons. So we'll make our way up another spinner track. I don't know why they love the spinner track so much in this area. It's such a gimmicky weapon. I mean, what's so special about the spinning gear that you'd have to base an entire dungeon around it? I'm not talking about the game developers here. I'm talking about whoever built this place. Why a spinner? Well, it looks like we were able to raise up a little rock, and I guess that's the mirror we've been looking for the whole time. And that raised all of the pillars, all the spires, to the sides of the Colosseum. Well, you found what you're looking for, Medna. Let's get ready for the final battle. I guess it's not there anymore. Not quite sure what the implications of that are, but she seems pretty distraught over the fact that this thing is broken. I take it that's not a very good sign. A dark entity lurks in the twilight. It houses an evil power. You who are guided by fate, you who possess the crest of the goddesses, hear us. At the command of the goddesses, we sages have guarded the Mirror of Twilight since ancient times. You seek it, but the Mirror of Twilight has been fragmented by mighty magic. The magic is a dark power that only he possesses. Are we really going to shoehorn in the same antagonist we've been using for the entire Legend of Zelda series? Yup. He was the leader of a band of thieves who invaded Hyrule in the hopes of establishing dominion over the sacred realm. He was known as a demon thief, an evil wielder, renowned for his ruthlessness. This house didn't have a roof. But he was blind. In all of his fury and might, he was blind to any danger, and thus he was exposed, subdued, and brought to justice. I still wish I got to see that. I would have loved seeing Ganondorf impaled. 
Still see the sword in him, though. Yet. <laughs> you can see he had the Triforce of Power the whole time. <laughs> Making him immortal. And the music from the final battle from Ocarina of Time plays, of course, by some divine prank, too. He had been blessed with the power of the gods. So he breaks free, and he actually killed one of the six sages. Using the sword they used to impale him through the chest as his own weapon. Evil or not, that is pretty badass. And in case you haven't noticed, the little symbols on the sages' robes are indeed the six medallions from Ocarina of Time. And you'll also see those on the spires around the Colosseum as well, where they're standing. We see what the Mirror of Twilight was for. It actually opens up a portal into the Twilight Realm into which they banished Ganondorf. And that's why the crest for the water spire is broken. His abiding hatred and lust for power turned to purest malice. Perhaps that evil power has been passed on to Zant. That would explain all the weird magic he's been doing. You're just now figuring out where Zant got his power, it's far too late. Only the true leader of the Twilly can utterly destroy the Mirror of Twilight, so Zant could merely break it into pieces. Once broken by magic, the Mirror of Twilight became fragments, which now lie hidden across the land of Hyrule. One is in the snowy mountain heights. One is in an ancient grove. And one is in the heavens. You who have been sent by the goddesses, you should be able to gather the three pieces while we sit here and do nothing. But you must be prepared for a dangerous power resides in those fragments, just like the fused shadows. We're not recycling plot lines, are we? I don't think so. Run with it. So you guessed it, now we have to go around the world searching for three fragments of evil things. Again. Now, we could go straight there, but now that we have the spinner, there are actually two things that we can do out in Hyrule Field, and I say we take care of those now. So I suppose I'll work to Castletown, and it's not too far away. I guess I'll just go. I figure I also might keep talking because we do risk running into the mailman since we have finished the Arbiter's Grounds, and I'm sure he'll have something to say if we stay around long enough. I swear that's a Helmosaur. I don't know why they put Helmosaurs out here. It seems really weird that they put Helmosaurs out here. Maybe it's just me, but I, they just don't seem to fit here. They seem more like enemies you would see hanging around inside a dungeon or something. But if we travel up the northwest section here, this section that's connecting the Great Bridge of Hylia and North Hyrule Field, you will notice, if you paid attention earlier on when we passed through here the first time, there are actually spinner tracks down here. And, of course, a Lizzlefos. But yeah, you can use these tracks to get around fairly easy. More importantly, though, you'll notice if you go around the opposite side, if you come in from the northern section, that there's actually a track going up. And that's the one we want to take. It's just difficult to see at nighttime when you're supposed to jump from track to track, or if it does it for you, I forget. It certainly does it for you here. But it follow along up here, wait until it takes you all the way around, and I missed it. It's difficult to see at nighttime, that's the only real excuse I have going for me. I do sort of wish it was lit up a little bit better, although I don't know what they would do around here to make it realistic. 
cool if the spinner lit up, if the spinner was glow-in-the-dark. Or if you could upgrade it so that it could be glow-in-the-dark, but I guess there isn't really any practical purpose to that other than it looking cool, I guess. But follow the spinner track all the way up here, and you will be rewarded with a treasure chest, which contains... What do you think it contains? A piece of heart, of course. And there's only one more of these spinner track related things we have to get. Where is it? Hmm, we could ride... We could just run straight over there, I suppose. It'd be a lot easier if we had a Pona with us, but... I don't know, I can't remember where the poorest grass is around here. I usually just warp down from a town or something. It'd be nice to know if, you know, where the horse grass was so you could all call upon it any time. Or just be able to do it at any time. Which we will eventually be able to do. I, I guess that's not much of a spoiler. But yeah, the other track is on the northeast section, the thin passage over there. And I'd really like to find that horse grass. I wonder if we can kill these guys in one hit. I've never tried. No, I guess not. Is... I guess two's enough. And we can't sheathe our sword all epic-like because we're a wolf and we don't have a sword. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. It's the postman. Even at night when we're a wolf, he can tell what we look like. What does Barnes want from us, though? That's kind of strange. I expected to get something from Telma. Oh, well, let's check it out. Is he going to tell us that he has bomb wings? I guess that's to tell us he has bomb wings. So to this point, he didn't have them? That's kind of weird. I thought he did, but I guess just because you unlocked the... Mallow Mart shop in Castletown, and you already have access to the bomb wings, it doesn't mean that Barnes has them yet. You know what? I haven't done this in a while. Might as well do it now. Hello, buddy. Did you really ruin it? I was a second away from finishing that. Right over your corpse. Just because I can. Now, where were we? I really need to stop picking up rupees when I don't need them. It's just habit, I guess, that I see something is there and I have to pick it up. I just have to because it's there. You can't tell me not to pick it up. I see money on the ground even if I don't have space in my wallet. I'm going to pick it up just out of principle because it's free money. There's money over here. Take it, damn it. Okay, I'm clearly running out of things to say while I'm just running around as a wolf. Tech tights, when was the last time we saw you? Those things have smarter AI than I remember. They can track your movements and actually head you off. Never remember them doing that. I always remember them as being stupid, but I also remember just charging by them, not really caring. So let's see, there should be a spinner track around here somewhere. A bridge upcoming nearby, either this one or the next one. We should start running into some archers, too. Wow, this is a longer run than I remembered. It's actually turning to daytime, isn't it? Well, that'll make it easier to see the spinner tracks, I guess. There they are. Some of these are really difficult to spot if you don't know to look for them, but yeah, there they are. They don't even look like spinner tracks, do they? Just looks like an indentation in the wall, but you know to start looking for these sorts of things, and... There isn't a treasure chest over here? I guess we just have to dig for it. Or maybe it's in here, I actually forget. I always remember coming here for something. Hello, Stalfos, that I have to blow up. Although I did promise I would actually fight one of these guys the way you were supposed to. So yeah, you knock those guys out, set a bomb near them, and that will explode them. It should also explode the one uh, that's alive, too, if it's close enough to it. And that'll do it. That was all three Stalfos. Even when you're fighting them normally, they're still fairly easy to kill. That's disappointing. But I can only say that so many times before it gets old. So let's just pick up the treasure. And it's another heart container. We now have 13. 
I don't know why I was ever worried about health. I mean, I said before... I like having a fairy on me at all times, just in case. But really, health isn't an issue. Oh well, we've done everything we can do, and since we already have all the pose and golden bugs we can get out of the way, we can just go straight to advancing the plot. Isn't that nice? To not have to worry about all of those extras since we did them already? Because I think it took me two recording sessions to get from, like, the Goron Mines to the Lake Bed Temple, or from the Lake Bed Temple to the Arbiter's Grounds. It just took way too long, but now that we've gotten all that crap taken care of, we can just run straight to the next area. So let's see if Telma has any information on where we should go next.